Hi folks, Champagne Friday with one of the best, one of the most famous, one of the most iconic. Tsar Alexander, you know the story, I won't take it here. Louis Redrick Crystal. What is that today? Is it a gimmick? Is it just a bling bling champagne? It has never been, despite the fact that it's been far too many bottles being drunk the wrong way in the wrong places. Full stop about that. Cristal will always remain one of the absolute best champagnes all categories. So that's why I, despite the fact that I have two weeks without any alcohol, which means no wine, since wine is the only thing with alcohol that I'm drinking, uh, just as a break between our VIP trip to Champagne in the Champagne Club and the Easter break with a lot of Guide Michelin restaurants with my small son. He didn't drink, but he was eating approximately as much as me. Um, so I went here to the office of the wine agent in, in Stockholm just to be shown the fantastic start of the new vintage. The 2015 a vintage that in general is more average or even slightly lower than average because the fruit sometimes especially from the Cote Blanc with the Chardonnay are slightly overripe, a little bit lacking acidity and freshness and, and elegance. So it will be very interesting to see what GB, Jean-Baptiste, Le Caillon, has been making this time. So uh, a change in style with crystal, slightly lower dosage over the years, approximately the same villages, 60-40 in this one, one because we have a little bit better Pinot Noir than Chardonnay in 2015 and more and more ecological vinification. Very slow transformation every step, but uh, that is the things that it are, have been changing over the years. The ageability, the freshness, the elegance, the, um, let's say something not very full-bodied, not very light, elegant, but medium-bodied, that's the style. And the only criticism I ever heard, except that people are drinking it in the wrong places, is that it's somewhere in between. Is it if you're just looking for the lightest of everything, or do you want to have the strongest push of the Krug-like intensity or things like that? Some people might prefer that. But if you want to go in the middle of the road of something extremely classic with a special touch of a house style, which is for me very much the soft, silky, white chocolate notes that's been uh, current uh, since the first vintage, 1945, and so on. So let's see if we're there. Uh, starting with this, very important, and I think they were first of making any kind of wrapping that was avoiding the dangerous goût de lumière. This is extremely important. I still keep it in the box and in this, in my cellar. Uh, a fact around Gou Lumiere that could be interesting to notice is that the Blanc de Blancs, for instance, the Deutsch Blanc de Blanc, and some others which are made in the clear bottles, Amour de Deutsch, and um, perhaps especially Belle Epoque Blanc de Blanc, they have, are so sensitive, so even just half an hour Passing the sun, you might have that. With the, with the crystals, the same treatment, it takes far longer. But it's because of the Pinot Noir, because of the strength, but they are also sensitive. So, I have removed that. One of the best foils, very clear, but also sharp. A little bit dangerous, be aware of how you open the bottle. The typical way of uh, open a bottle, of course, the six laps, one, two, three, four, five, six, very easy to remember. 45 degrees angle, the turning of the bottle, not the cork, the whispering sound, not any strong smashing fireworks. We want to keep the fantastic bubbles inside the bottle. And the bubbles, the mousse or crystal, is really something special. It's one of the softest, one of the most um, elegant, and also one of those who 
brings out the most small multifaceted aromas when they are bursting in your palate. Look, problem. Normally I put my thumb in the bottom, in the cavity of, of the bottle. This is flat. The story goes that the reason was because uh, Sarah Alexander wanted to have a special bottle that he could, he could recognize. But the truth is that normally they don't do this because there might be a chain reaction explosions when bottles are stepped upon each other and they kept it for mythological reasons. So, hands around the bottle. First, pouring just a little bit. I put it away. I say the same. What we're looking for in the 2015 is to avoid the very strong cedar-like, overmature apple aromas that you very, very often, almost always get from Cote Blanc. And you want to find as much power as possible from mature Pinot Noir. So it could go from 50-50, but here we are up to 60 Pinot Noir and 40 Chardonnay. Here we go. Uh, just the first visual examination shows that it's not that deep in color, which is a good sign. It, uh, JB have been keeping the, the lightness of color, keeping the, avoiding pr probably the oxidation to every cost, because that, is, that might be a problem in this vintage. Beautiful bubbles. Time to have the first sip, the first smell of Cristal, 2015. Wow, wow, purity, typicity. The white chocolate notes, the almost dusty minerality from the chalk. The apple notes are more green, which is very good, more direct, fresh, and. Uh, uh, Granny Smith notes than the very cider-like aromas. Not so strong today, which is good, because when the crystal is just released, you don't want to have too much of the exotic notes, like the coconut and the white chocolate and, and the mango and those kind of things. You can find it, but it's not the most evident. Time to taste. Splendid. Trois Baptiste, you made it again. It's not one of the greatest crystals ever. It's a very open, direct, easy to drink crystal if you compare it to other vintages. But if you just taste it like this, it's an extraordinary elegant champagne. If I think back to my old memories of other vintages, it's slightly rounder, it's more opulent, it doesn't have the really harsh um, astringency that you normally get. Slightly more pear notes, slightly more mashed apples as well. But again, a beautiful crystal. Friends, see you next Friday. Cheers. <laughs>